Hey y'all, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you a pretty simple Halloween set. And I'm going to achieve this by using some decals and some nail stamping. So the first thing I did was she came in and I have soaked off the previous set that she had. Now I'm going in with my hand file and I am just taking down her free edge. I do this whether it's a soak off or full set, I always do this part. Now I'm going to take my cuticle pusher and push back her eponychium. And as you can see, I sprayed a little bit of alcohol because it was kind of tough to push that back. And so that alcohol just loosens that right up and allows me to push back the eponychium. Once I do that, I'm going to come in with my e-file and I'm going to use my cuticle bit. And just like every time, I start in the center and I work the left side first. So I do all of the left side. And then once I have done all five fingers, I put my e-file in reverse and I do the opposite side. Here I'm coming in with my sanding band and I'm just going to go over her natural nail plate. Now the purpose of this of course is to just take off the shine off the natural nail plate but she does have a little bit of product left over so you will see me going in and taking that remainder off. Now when it comes to this lifted area I'm just going to go behind that lifted area and it will just kick off that remaining product. So once I've done my natural nail prep, I have applied and shaped her tips, then I dehydrated her nail plate, and then I primed twice, and then I added a clear base to all of the nails. Now this one is going to be an ombre, so I'm going to start at the center of the nail, place my bead, and then blend out the back of the bead. Once I do that, I'm going to just start walking that bead down. I want full coverage, I don't want it to be sheer, so I'm using the body of my brush to just pat that product into place. Now once I have it covered, I have the tip all covered, I'm going to just allow this to dry and I'll come back to it. When you're doing ombres, especially dark colors, you want to give time for that product to dry so your colors just won't run into each other and you can get a nice blend. So I'm going to allow it to dry and I'm going to move on to the pinky. So for the pinky, it's going to be just a full color. I'm going to come in towards the end and add a chrome. So I'm being very careful with this color. This is Glam and Glitz Surf and it is one of their more harder powders to work with. I tend to, to notice that of course, you know, the darker the color, the more pigment it has, so the harder it is to use. So I'm just being really careful, trying not to get it on her skin, trying not to get it in the cuticle area, and I'm just patting that product down, being very, very careful as I do so. And once I get this color all the way down, I'm, I'm not really worried about it being opaque, but I don't want it just to have, you know, a, a lot of sheerness through it. So I'm going to come in with a small bead and just add it at the center and try to get as much opaqueness as I can. So back to my ombre, I'm gonna come in with that same purple and I'm just gonna take a small bead and place it on top of the first bead. Once I do that, I'm just going to walk it down. I'm gonna kinda walk it past the black and then I'm just going to blend it down, blend it through. Now with darker ombres, you wanna be sure that you use more and smaller beads. So typically on an ombre, I'll do maybe um, two beads when it comes to the blended color. But here I'm gonna add maybe three or four. I'm gonna use small beads and I'm gonna make sure that I have that blend correct.
So for this nail, I kind of envisioned a smoky effect. So I'm just coming in with my clear and white and I'm using very wet beads and I'm just going to marble that through the whole entire nail. Now this is only going to be the base. I'm going to do layering and kind of start adding some dimension. So this is my base. Top of this nail I'm going to be using some foil I got back in my Aliexpress haul I'm finally getting a chance to use it so I'm going to take this foil and I'm just going to cut out a small piece I'm going to try to mimic the size of the nail just a little bit smaller than the nail but I'm starting out with a clear base and then I'm going to take that cut out piece and just place it on top of that nail now when you're doing something like this you're going to encapsulate um, this kind of foil you want to be sure that you do not bulk it up on the sides or the surrounding perimeter of the nail you want it free from the cuticle area and free from the edges so I'm coming in with my scissors and I'm just cutting off any excess now on the opposite hand I kind of got a little bit smarter and I cut them up into smaller pieces and it was way easier to encapsulate so when you're doing something like this, don't try to do it all in one huge piece. Cut it up and make it, make it easier for you. So now that that clear is setting up, I'm just pressing that foil into the nail, pressing it as much as I can. And I'm gonna come in and just add a little bit of clear on top so I can further press that into place. So for my thumb, I'm going to be doing a full glitter nail and I'm just going to start off by adding a thin base of the purple color. My glitters are purple, so by me doing this, it's just going to make those glitters pop. Now I am using raw glitters. I prefer them over mixed uh, acrylic glitters. So what I'll do is I'll take a thin bead of clear and I'll just place that into the raw glitter and then I'm gonna just place that onto my nail. Now, like I said, this is going to be full coverage. So I'm gonna start at the cuticle area and just bring it all the way down to the tip. Now, once I do that, I'm gonna come in with my brush and with no product on it, I'm gonna dip it into the raw glitter and then I'm just going to pat that on top of that product so this is going to give you a better clarity of the glitter you're not going to see it mixed in with the clear now I always do my glitters like that if I'm using raw glitters in my opinion it really helps with the clarity of the nail So here are the decals that I'm going to use, Nightmare Before Christmas. And as you can see, I've already used them. I've actually had them for a, re a really long time. So I don't remember where I got them from. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out that image. I'm gonna make sure that I trace all of the image out. And then I'm just going to place it in a cup of water. And then I'm gonna come back to my nail and I'm gonna apply my base color. Now you wanna use a base color that matches your decal. So I'm coming in with the black and I'm just going to start at the cuticle area and I'm going to just do a thin base of this color. So once I have the base down, I'm just going to take that image out of the water and I'm going to separate it from the paper backing and I'm going to place it on the paper towel. I'm going to try and dab out as much of the water as I can. Now this bead is still setting up so it's really just tacky and that's what you want. You want to place it on a tacky base. So I placed it onto the nail and now I'm lining it up and making sure that it's where I want it to be. Once I have it where I want it to be, I'm just going to smooth it out. Now you wanna be super careful when you do this because you can easily tear this picture 
while you're doing it. So I'm being careful and now I'm coming in with a paper towel and I'm just uh, tapping out any remaining water. You do not want to leave water on these decals. Now I'm going to come through and just take off the excess with my scissors and make sure that I don't have anything sticking out. This is what's going to help when it comes to encapsulating. So you do not want to leave any product on the sides. Now I'm going to come through the tip and I'm just going to add a little bit of black. It was kind of sheer there and I kind of wanted to just, you know, flow in with the image. So once I do that, I'm going to going to quickly encapsulate these. So when encapsulating stickers, charms, decals, anything like that, I start at the cuticle area and I place down a very wet bead. I place a wet bead down because I want that product just to be able to flow from cuticle to tip without me having to touch it too much. I'll come in and I'll start working the sides, but I don't want to touch the image too much because I don't want to risk the chance of the color coming off or me tearing it. So being very gentle, let, letting the wet bead just flow over the image and then when it starts to set up, you can move it and go on as normal and build your apex. So once I have everything capped, I'm going to come in and start my finished filing process. I always start with the perimeter of the nail. I get it nice and sharp into shape and then I'll come through with my safety bit and work the body and then finish with my sanding band and then buff the nails. And the file that I'm using is from E Nail Couture. It's their metal file board and I believe the grit is 180. So when it comes to nail art, most of it is on top of the nails. So I got my base covered and now I'm going to go in and just add the finishing touches. So like I said, for that full color purple nail, I'm going to be doing a chrome. So I'm going to use this no cleanse top coat and I'm just going to glide that over the purple nail. And the chrome that I'm using is just one of the chameleon chromes. It pulls purple and kind of green, but since I put down the purple base, it's going to pull more of that purple color. So now I'm going to come in with my stamping plate and the first thing I'm going to do is clean it with pure acetone. Then I'm going to go over the image with my polish, scrape away the excess, and then quickly grab my clear stamper and roll over the image. Then I'm going to take her nail and just lightly press that image onto the nail. So I'm going to come back to my chrome nail and I have already top coated this with the no cleanse top coat and now I'm going to come in and just make some drips. Now it was kind of difficult to see where they were going because the chrome was reflecting so much against my lights but all I'm doing is going in using my dotting tool making dots and then I'm going to come through with my striper brush and just brush those lines up and then, you know, just create the outline of the drips. And I started to use a lighter purple chrome and I almost wish I would have because you could see the drips better, but I, I feel like this chrome goes way better with this set. So it still looked good.
And here on the opposite hand, I'm going to show you guys what I also stamped. And I just, y'all know it, I love stamping. I just cannot get over, you know, you can take an image and just stamp it onto the nail plate. Boom, fast, you're done. I ain't got time to be hand painting. I wish I could, but, you know, I can't. I'm trying to, and I need to try to push myself to do more hand painting too. Because some stuff I can do, but then I'm like, eh, I'll just stamp it. <laughs> but I love stamping nonetheless. Now to finish her set off, I'm just going to add some diamonds and you can see my table kind of looks a mess. At this point, my next client was there. I was like panicking. Oh my gosh, I need to hurry up. So I would have done more but this is all I had the time to do. So I just put some diamonds on her, glossed her with my Young Nails top coat, and she is done. If you guys enjoyed this Halloween set, thank you for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.